We live in a tumultuous world right now. A pandemic, social unrest, and an unsteady economy all at one time. It can be overwhelming. The bad news sometimes just doesn't seem to stop. In my last video, I talked about how Ben Franklin sought to do good each day. But as pivotal in the formation of our country as Ben was, he was not the bigger than life George Washington. Most Americans know of Washington's heroic life and faithful service as the first president of the United States, but what you probably don't know about was his love for Martha, his wife. In this video, I'll share with you the contents of a single surviving love letter from George to Martha. Hi, I'm Rich Bolin, and on this channel we talk about tech, life, and how to get things done. If you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button and tap the bell so you'll be notified when a new video is released. Like all content creators on YouTube, it takes a little bit of time to produce these videos. And if you find this video helpful or entertaining, showing your support by subscribing, giving a thumbs up, and leaving a comment below really helps us grow. So you may not know this, but George Washington was Martha's second husband. She was married to a wealthy man, Daniel Custis, for seven years. They had two children. He died an early death, opening the door for a courtship between George and Martha. George was not nearly at the same social or economic level as Martha. However, she was still attracted to the man who held the highest position of the Virginia provincial troops. George had recently inherited Mount Vernon from his brother, who'd passed away. He was now in a position to be a husband, and so on January 6, 1759, Martha Custis became Martha Washington. Like many of the wives of our founding fathers, George was away from Martha for long periods of time, and while these great men were casting their lives, lots, families, and fortunes on the line in an attempt to form a free nation and defeat the most feared army on earth, the wives were there, advising, coaching, supporting, and loving their husbands. In today's terms, they were a team. And from this small number of men and women, a new nation was born, one of freedom, liberty, and self-determination, the likes of which had never been seen before. But I'm getting ahead of the story. Remember, this is 1775. There is no internet, TV, radio, or any form of mass communication, only the lowly handwritten letter. War had broken out between the British Army and the people of Boston. In April of 1775, the British attacked at Lexington and Concord in Massachusetts. The Continental Congress met in June of 1775 in Philadelphia, and it was there that Colonel Washington became the leader of the Continental Army. John Adams, our second president, wrote to his wife Abigail that, I can now inform you that the Congress have made choice of the modest and virtuous, the amiable, generous, and brave George Washington to be the general of the American Army, and that he is to repair as soon as possible to the camp before Boston. The very next day, Washington sent a letter to Martha saying, it's been determined in Congress that the whole army raised for the defense of the American cause shall be put under my care, and that it is necessary for me to proceed immediately to Boston to take upon me the command of it. You may believe me, my dear Patsy, when I assure you in the most solemn manner that so far from seeking this appointment, I have used every endeavor in my power to avoid it. And so Colonel Washington became General Washington, leader of the Continental Army. A week later, Washington left Philadelphia and headed to Boston, but not before he wrote one last sweet letter to Martha. He said, My dearest, as I am within a few minutes of leaving this city, I could not think of departing from it without dropping you a line, especially as I do not know whether it may be in my power to write again till I get to the camp at Boston. I go fully trusting in that providence, which has been more bountiful to me than I deserve, and in full confidence of a happy meeting with you sometime in the fall, I have not time to add more, as I am surrounded with company to take leave of me. I retain an unalterable affection for you, which neither time or distance can change. My best love to Jack and Nellie and regard for the rest of the family. Yours entirely, George. As was the custom at the time and to preserve personal conversations, at George's death, Martha burned all the letters between she and George. But this letter was found hidden in Martha's dresser drawer after her passing. Why did she save this letter? It was very short and written in haste. My guess is that it meant the world to her. Her soldier husband was going off to fight an unwinnable war. She may never see him again. 
She wanted to remember that his love for her would never change regardless of time or distance. A true love spoken through a pen using words we rarely use today. As I look back to the beginning of our nation and to the character of the men and women who forged it in the crucible of war, forsaking their very lives so that others could live in freedom, I remain thankful that I'm an American and thankful for the true love they had for each other that persevered to the end. It serves as an example to this very day. In the midst of the turmoil in our country today, I hope you found this short story encouraging. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.